The Oyster Perpetual has been a part of the Rolex collection for a while and is the brand's entry-level watch. In fact, it has been considered Rolex's finest multi-purpose timepiece. With a water-resistant case and self-winding movement, these are two of the brand's most significant inventions highlighted. But it never comes off as overdone or excessively precious. The collection of exquisitely crafted, attractively fashionable, time-only Rolex watches clearly checks all the boxes. The traditional Rolex OP is just a subtle class act, never over or underdressed, and it's the least costly and possibly most diverse timepiece the company offers. Today, I want to share the top 5 reasons why we adore this watch. But wait, there's more. This watch has a significant drawback as well. The question is, what's wrong with this entry-level Rolex? Keep watching until the end of the video to find out. Welcome back to Above First Class. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. A Rolex watch is technically an Oyster Perpetual, with the exception of the Cellini line. The name is derived from the self-winding perpetual movement the company created in the early 1930s and the waterproof Oyster case that provides everyone with at least 100 meters of water resistance. There has, indeed, always been a distinct line of timepieces with all the unnecessary components removed, leaving only three hands to indicate the time, and that's the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Collection. Let's start with the most obvious reason why we adore this watch, which is its straightforward dial design. That is essentially the idea of an Oyster Perpetual, I guess. Being all straightforward and minimalistic, yet I still want to add emphasis to this because I believe that a certain degree of skill is required of a watchmaker to execute a straightforward dial without making it appear dull. In comparison to previous Oyster Perpetual models, the most recent ones have a particularly classic appearance. You have your well-known double sticks at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock to aid in legibility and ease of setting a considerable amount of loom, and your notable stick hour markers together with their white gold border. Additionally, each hour marker has a little square on top with contrasting minute markers. The hands are also loomed and follow the square design. Even while everything is kept simple, it nonetheless closely adheres to a single design idea, and all of the dial's components harmoniously complement one another. The second reason I want to point out is its size. This particular Oyster Perpetual, or OP, has a 36mm diameter. Proportionally, it fits many different wrist sizes exceptionally well and lies in the zone where, depending on your wrist circumference, you might say it was either more classy or sporty. Given its dimensions, I would say that this watch has a sporty look. But if you were to imagine wearing this 36mm OP, it would look more exquisite on a person with a larger wrist. In addition, I believe the watch's overall case shape and design contribute to its versatility and make it incredibly simple to match with a variety of styles, settings, or events. Third, we have the clasp. I want you to take a closer look at this, particularly the easy link within it. Let me show you why we appreciate it a lot, even though it is quite obvious. Don't need any watch equipment to rapidly modify your bracelet with an easy link such as this one. Aspects like this are quite helpful if you have a wrist that frequently changes in size in response to changes in temperature. Or maybe you just have a really particular wrist circumference and you have trouble getting your bracelets to fit precisely. These rapid adjustments function as a half link on your bracelet in those circumstances. I find that to be a really great approach to make your watch fit much better. The fourth point, the brushed bracelet, is what we'll be talking about next. After wearing a watch for a few weeks or months, you frequently get these hairline brushlings, which the smooth brushing of it really works wonders to conceal. Now that we've talked about the watch's exterior, let's explore its interior. Fifth, we have the 2020 released Rolex 3230 movement. It is a COSC certified movement, and it should operate with a precision of roughly plus or minus two seconds each day. Additionally, it offers a 70-hour power reserve, which is somewhat of the unsung hero of the entire thing. Enjoying this video so far? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So what's wrong with this entry-level Rolex? We'll now talk about the three things that we find disturbing with this timepiece, with the last being by far the biggest issue here. First off, is that tiny, misleading safety latch-looking component on the clasp. However, on the Oyster Perpetual, you have what simply appears to be an additional latch, but is essentially just attached to it. On some other models, such as the Rolex Submariner or a Yacht Master, for instance, on the clasp, 
you have the safety latch to add a little more security. It only slightly bends back, which in itself makes me want to pull back the entire piece and break it apart to see what unfolds. Even though the majority of people don't really have a problem with this, you'll seem to find it extremely annoying. Moving on with the second issue is certainly the domed bezel. It's not that I dislike the way it looks. We all enjoy a good domed bezel, but sadly, these rounded surfaces like the bezel are a great scratch magnet. Now, let's get to the point in this video's title, which is the biggest issue here. This is the major flaw in this watch, which prevents it from being considered a perfect entry-level timepiece today. There is no arguing that the Oyster Perpetual 36 is not just the ideal watch for a single watch collection, but also a terrific place to start if you're looking for your very first Rolex or luxury watch. For a suggested retail price of 5,200 euros, you may acquire this watch in the traditional size with a 36 millimeter case, a clasp with an easy link, a gorgeous bracelet, as well as the same high quality Rolex standards, just like you would with a Rolex that costs two or three times as much. Therefore, it meets all the criteria in general, but that is far from the truth. You see, it's not real, yet the cold hard facts still hold true. And now that you think of it, it's no longer accurate to consider it as a fantastic option because you simply cannot afford one. Since no one can start off with it at that rate, it is therefore not an excellent entry-level watch. Years ago, the Oyster Perpetual watch was on a display in the store window, and if you negotiated well, you might even be able to receive a small discount. But at this point, if you went to an AD to purchase an Oyster Perpetual and they didn't outright laugh in your face, you should consider yourself very lucky. And if you had to go to the gray market, this timepiece would start at around 14,000 to 15,000, which is irrationally more than three times the retail price. All in all, an entry-level Rolex watch still is pretty much a Rolex. The brand makes no compromises in any form, and several of the features you'd see on a watch from the highest end are also included in the most affordable model it offers. That stainless steel is not some cheap, subpar trade-off. All those Rolex customers are still individuals who just want that one good timepiece that they can wear every single day, despite the fact that the brand is perhaps the world's most well-known watch manufacturer and produces some of the most sought-after timepieces in history. It must have an affordable price, be versatile, be sturdy, and be firmly made to last countless years. The major problem is that at this rate, it is just too expensive, something which would not make sense to start with. Similar to other stainless steel Rolex watches, the Oyster Perpetual once served as the gateway into Rolex ownership, but it is now practically impossible at retail. Plus, another issue with this watch is that it practically became the perfect candidate for outrageous gray market prices. This is unfortunate since despite this problem, we genuinely think it's among the few watches you could purchase, enjoy for the foreseeable future, and be satisfied with. What are your thoughts on the Oyster Perpetual 36 scenario? please let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you next time in Above First Class.